What's up, what's up? It's the Arthur Most Experience with Deke. I'm Arthur Most, and that's my main man, Deke. What's up, Deke? I'm excited, man. We got a jam packed episode today. We do. A lot of hot topics. Ton of topics, man. Mm-hmm. Ton of topics. We're going to get into some Pro Bowl, wide some, ranging, some, some potential rule adjustments, Bud Dupree contract situation, the MLB Hall of Fame. And we're gonna talk a little XFL, man. So it's it's a ton on this. It's a ton on the plate today, man. I got a lot to say. I like it. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the first times we really have like talked ahead of time. Like, yo, this is what we're gonna be discussing. It's been a while. It I has. mean, we used to back whenever we first started with right. NBA. But ever since the Steelers season started, we've just been all right. When we record, yeah, that's it. Because we Whatever know once we get in here, we're gonna flow. Right, right. <laughs> but today it was like, yeah, we got specific things that need to be discussed. That we really have to, not only do we have to talk about it, but we got to give the audience a chance to to dive in because that's what they love about this show. The fact that we're going to have our conversation, but we're also going to present it to them in a way that they can give their feedback to us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, man. So first off, talking about the Pro Bowl, the game we played this weekend. And uh, let's see, the Steelers had a total of six guys to make it to the Hall, I mean, to the Pro Bowl. Joe Hayden, TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Minka Fitzpatrick. Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro. Now, Pouncey and DeCastro won't be playing in the game. They pulled out for rest and injury-related reasons. So the four that will be in there are obviously Joe Hayden, TJ Watt, Cam, and Minka. So I guess I'll start in terms of my thoughts on those guys being in the game and actually playing in it. I do think it's a huge honor. Um, I do. I I. I I like them playing in it because it gives us something to talk about and it's, it gives us a reason to actually watch the game. But at the same time, I'm not the biggest fan of it because I'm like, yo, you don't need to take those risks for this Pro Bowl game. Nope. If something would happen, I would be sick. Like, that's that's my only thing with it, man. But I think for a guy like Joe Hayden, for example, man, for this being his third opportunity to play in the Pro Bowl, but his first as a Steeler, I think that's very significant. For TJ Watt, the year that he's had, he deserves the pomp and circumstance of going to the Pro Bowl and everybody knowing, like, hey, man, you might, you're a finalist for the Defensive Player of the Year award. Like, I think that element, excuse me, is really cool. For Cam Hayward, we know he's a guy that early in his career struggled to get the recognition from a league wide standpoint. So for him, it's still fresh. Not like guys like Marquise Ponce and DeCastro who've been so many times. It's just like, ah, uh, I don't really care about it. <laughs> and then Minka, he's still young. He's a puppy in his league, man. So for him, it's another big deal to still be making and things like that. So for those guys that are playing and I do understand why they're doing it. And I will tune in solely because of those guys playing in it. But my biggest thing is, man, don't go out there and be no hero. I don't want you winning the MVP of the Pro Bowl game. I don't. I, I personally don't want you to have a stat. I want you to just <laughs> get your nice little sweat, nice little lather, and, and, and go and put it on the side and, and clap for the other people out there. That's just me. What say you? I'm definitely with you, dude. I don't even watch it anymore. No. I used to watch it here and there whenever I was a kid, but at this point, mm-hmm. like you said, the meaning of it is more of hey don't get hurt yeah now there's this one dude i don't know if you ever heard of him mark titus he used to be a walk on at ohio state this okay. is whenever uh greg odin was playing this is for hoops yeah. greg odin and mm-hmm. evan turner was on those teams so he walked yeah, on yeah. and there was this thing called club trillion mm-hmm. where you would go in as a walk on and it was actually more of an honor to get a zero stat line across the oh, box wow. as a, as a walk yeah. cuz it's you know it's kind of like a joke and everything right, right, right. so that's kind of what you want in this yes, game yes. for the pro bowlers and what does that mean then why is the game being played at I all i agree well and this is the thing too i felt like when you were growing up same generation as when i was growing up the game meant more because they actually played they competed it was cool in that regard but now it's become so just a fluff show in terms of the 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 intensity level the passion remember for a while they even talked about potentially doing away with the game if the intensity level didn't pick up and they flirted with some different ideas in terms of instead of it being afc nfc just having team captains and let them pick whoever Mm -hmm. so that element was cool but i think because these players understand the business element of the league so much more now they understand that injury or anything that doesn't go their way can be detrimental to them in a negotiation standpoint that they're taking that approach in games like this and that's why we're seeing how it is whereas the alternative to this would be the mlb how like their game dictates who's going to have home field in the world series i think that part of it is drastically different why their game is a lot more competitive with us, yeah. Super Bowl, it's only one game. So right, right so it matter. doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. 
And it's at a neutral place. Yeah. What really started to get me off the Pro Bowl was whenever you started seeing all the dudes sitting out for the yes. rest reasons, and then the players that were coming Actually in. Play. It'd be this, dude, the seventh alternate. It was like Teddy Pro Bridgewater, yeah. Andy Dalton, Jameis Winston well, were I, making it well, as quarterbacks. I remember so the, like, the one time, on. and, and this is like I said, this is my guy from the same area back home, seven five seven, Tyrod Taylor. I remember the first, like, when he got in, and it was like that, and literally it was like five quarterbacks. This is your Ben had pulled out. Um, it was Ben pulled out, Brady pulled out. Like, it was like a list of how many quarterbacks had pulled out for Tyrod to get in. And then it was like, oh, no, that's a Pro Bowl quarterback now. And it was just like, man, at what point do you just say, mate, like, dude, if it's six alternates before you get the call, like, come on. And, and that's for me when I really started being like, man, I don't even care about this anymore, man. But you still have to respect them as Pro Bowls. And like I said, there's no shot at him, but I'm just saying like from no. a – Watching the game, the interest in the game, so you watch it because you want to see the best player is not the seventh or eighth best player at that position make it. Yeah, bro. If I made it yeah. because of that, I wouldn't care. If you oh, no, to, not at all. If yeah. you go to pro, profootballreference.com, it says Pro Bowl. It says one time yeah. Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and for him, from a contract negotiation standpoint, it's like, dude, I'm a Pro Bowl quarterback. Pay <laughs> me. And then just even think yeah. 20 or 30 years down the road, people looking back on that, yeah, like, Who's no, one's, no one's going to know. Not like, at all. Like the kids, like yeah. people our age, looking up mm -hmm. these stats are going to say Pro Bowl. Wow. Pro Bowl, yeah. Like you're going to really have to dive in deep to figure Absolutely, out how man. and why. <laughs> I, and I will say the one thing that they're trying to bring back, but it still isn't like how it used to be. You remember they used to have the skills challenges. Mm hmm back then like you had yeah, the bench press contest the the throwing the ball like who could throw it the furthest they had the flag football game like with the celebrities out there like i missed that element and they're mm -hmm. trying to bring it back i think they did dodgeball they did dodgeball last recently, year yeah. so i mean they're trying but it still isn't the same as when they were doing it back then like i remember watching was it larry allen and uh and oh my god it was somebody they had like the bench press contest and these dudes are just going at it like for me i missed that but they're not going to do those type of things right now just because, like I said, the injury concerns that are associated with it for the guys nowadays to understand the business of it, it's not worth it. So what's the alternative? <sighs> Man, that's the thing. So <laughs> I mean, you do, you do want to have something. Right, absolutely. You do because I think it's important to celebrate these players that have made it to the Pro Bowl. And I think it's important that they do participate in some type of game. But I think what we have to understand is what are we looking for in the game? If we're looking for it to be competitive, you could potentially try to work around like moving it or having some more ramifications involved with it in terms of the winning team has whatever it may be if you ump if you up the money for the winning team because right now I think it is the winning team gets like 30 or 40 grand the, the losing team gets like 10 to 15 Each grand player. something like that yeah so in that regard it's cool but for most of these guys like that's chump change for them yeah so that's one element you could bump the stakes up in terms of money the other way is if you were to move it, but now you're going to run into the issue of if you're putting it anywhere during the season, it's not like baseball, basketball, where it's not the physical element of it. With baseball and basketball, you could have in the middle of the season because yeah. it's just, I mean, those guys can play so many more games without the injury concerns. With football players, you throw that in the middle of a season, that, man, yeah, <laughs> you nah, cannot you do that. No, nah, you can't be doing that. Yeah. So we don't know what it is. We don't. I think, I think you still <laughs> play the games, but I just... I don't know, man. Yeah, it's weird. Because I'm just not watching. I, I just know I'm yeah. not going to watch it. Right. And, and like I said, the only way you're going to get these guys to play with more intensity is if you either up the stakes, up the money. But I don't know if the 13 or 14-year-old kid out there is watching it. Yeah. So Well, anymore, just because of how bad it's been of lately. If you get a Pro Bowl where it's like, okay, these dudes really out here balling again, the following year, people will tune into it. That's what I'm saying. Like If, if they came out here and it's big time, everybody remembers the Sean Taylor hit on Brian Warman. Where he just rockets, just blast him. Let some highlights come from this Pro Bowl game of that. I can assure you, next season you will watch it, and a ton more people watch it because you're like, okay, these dudes really balled out, and it's actually the real people out there, not the twelfth alternate, the twelfth alternate out there. I think that element would change it a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. This may be something we we come back to next year, yeah. right? When right, well, we're going to see how it looks. We'll, yeah. we'll have to take yeah. a deep dive into what could be yeah. changed. Although, we, you did mention when mm -hmm. you texted me about the topics, the, the mm -hmm. rule change. Yeah, so... And this could be said... Mm -hmm. I know they're experimenting with it yeah. in the Pro Bowl, but this could be mm -hmm. something potentially yeah. in the league well, well, regular season. Typically, the way they do it, they'll experiment in the Pro Bowl with these alternate rules 
and more than likely they usually carry over into that next season so the rule change that we're talking about potentially is with the uh, onside kick rule whereas typically onside kick you line up at the 35 yard line i believe it is yeah the 30 or 35 i can't remember off the top of my head you kick the the onside kick you got a chance to recover but due to the restrictions of the alignments now i mean the likelihood of you getting it is i mean it's bad i it's looked less at, than like i looked at the stats yeah. i think across all nfl history it mm-hmm. said around 20 percent. right this is like you know, less than 10 percent. the now. last yeah. two years it dropped from uh seven last year yeah. and it was 12 this year so yeah. it's not good yeah. yeah so the alternative is this they're gonna say that instead of kicking an onside kick if you want to attempt to onside play you get the ball at your own 25 yard line fourth and 15 one shot at it. if you get the first down you maintain possession wherever you got that first time. It could be a 30-yard game. It could be a 50-yard game. It could be a 16-yard game. Wherever that game was, your new possession starts right there and you proceed. Now, the thing is, if you don't get it, the defense or the opposing team takes over possession wherever that ball stops. So if you get sacked on a 4th and 15th from the 25, you get sacked on your own 10, the other team gets the ball on the 10. Yeah. So I'm good with that. Risk-reward. Well, it's high risk, high reward, but you understand this. I mean, it's desperate times, desperate measures. Yeah. So I do like that element, especially because we know the onside kick and the probability of it being successful is so low. This at least gives you a chance to have your better players out there to still have a meaningful snap in, in that portion of the game. Now, my question to you is this. <laughs> so you remember when they changed and started making the two-point conversion a big deal, right? And obviously here in Pittsburgh, we were innovative in terms of going forward a ton for yeah. two instead of kicking field goals. Yeah, because they extended the right, right. Uh, the extra point out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so how would you feel if our Steelers are taking that same approach and being innovative with the onside kick now? Or some of these high powered offenses are saying, hey, it's the first quarter. Let's go for it. In the first quarter. I mean, I'm just saying. Wow. <laughs> because <laughs> I mean, it's it's a different element, is it not? Like we would see, I mean, for us with Pittsburgh, we were going for two way more times we were kicking field goals. It was like, hey, line it up, let's go for two. That is 15 yards, though. Yeah. Even though I was going to suggest that they should bump that up to like 19 or 20 yards. Yeah, because I don't feel like 415 is that crazy, especially with some of these high-powered offenses that we're seeing. Yeah, so I think you'd have to bump that up to maybe like 20 yards or 25 even. I I don't Mm -hmm. know for sure the exact. Um, In terms of doing it in the first and second quarter, that sounds crazy. Yeah. Especially on, I mean, you've dudes. Punting. I mean, people said it was crazy going for it for two as much as we were going yeah, for it you until had, you saw our success rate, and they're like, "Dang, yeah, but you I have like teams, this. You have teams already punting mm-hmm. on fourth and ones and fourth right. and inches. But so. the flip side, you think about Lamar Jackson and them; they were going for it a ton in those situations. We know the Chiefs; they have an offense that's more than capable. Fifteen yards, though. <laughs> the Chiefs aren't capable of getting a fourth and fifteen. I mean, would you want that? <laughs> well, this is the thing. If that's the rule. If you have a high powered offense like that, I mean, hey, I'm rolling the dice. It's taking almost, some shots. It's almost a guaranteed field goal for them. It would be if you don't get it. But it's no different if you're going for two and you miss that. Now it's guaranteed you didn't get those seven or eight points. You only got six points, it's which changed the dynamic of a game. You say it doesn't matter. It adds up, and we all have seen that on numerous occasions. It does, but you have a yeah. better chance of making up for it, though, mm-hmm. as opposed to you trying to make up for it in the course of several drives. Or not even making up for it, but trying to get ahead, because if you click on it, now you got a chance to keep one of those high powered offenses off the field per se. I will, I don't know, dude. I wouldn't be good with that. Fourth and fifteen. I do like the rule though yeah. for uh to replace an onside kick yeah. like late in the game. You I mean you you can like you said, you can use it whenever I mean, think you want. We were surprised onside kick all the time, right? Well, not all the time, but we've seen it. I mean, if, even in the Super Bowl, the Saints versus the Colts, that was the that was the change in play, the on, surprise onside kick. But we've lost that element with the new rules. With the, yes, you would have. Yeah. So, like, even at this point, whenever you're down two scores and you're mm-hmm. you're driving, you're trying to come back, and then you score. Mm-hmm. But the way to come back because of the time yeah. is to kick the onside kick. I, it always feels hopeless now. Yeah, it, it really it does. does. If you're down two scores with like five the minutes onside left, kick is like, oh, it's just trash. Better just kick it deep and hope your defense gets three and out. My question is though, if they move it, which I really like, I really like yeah. this fourth and I do 15, too. That's the thing. 20. I do. I think it definitely yeah. adds an element of entertainment. My question is, do you just remove the kickoff in general? Well, the reason I say no is because from a, stra- uh, a strategic standpoint, the kickoff, as we saw with the Ravens, it's a weapon if you use it the right way. And in and traditional it's an exciting play, and in traditional NFL, it's just always been there. Right. Like, I don't feel like. Mm-hmm. There, there would be something missing if the kickoff right. isn't there. Because we've heard some people say, man, 
due to the millennials or the people that just play mad and it's like no one kicks anymore i'm like no honestly people do kick people do punt they do people don't like to play that way <laughs> those time if you're playing against a guy and he's playing the, the traditional like he's punting on fourth down he's killing the clock snapping the ball late but finds ways to win like that you say what he's cheating it's annoying. It's I've, annoying. I've played against those people, yeah. and I can't stand it. I but, yell but, at the TV, and I they, say, play the damn game. But but <laughs> they win, though. That, it, it's, it's very because successful. It's, because it's frustrating, yeah. because I lose my patience. Yeah, it, but it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a highly effective way to play the game, and no different in the NFL. I mean, like, you talk about just how flipping the field when you punt the ball versus if you did not punt the ball, you turned the ball over, you went for it, and, and came up short. We saw that critical play, uh, the Texans. When they when they went for it on fourth down versus the Chiefs and how that kind of flipped that whole thing or the punt or the kickoff return from the Chiefs players versus the Texans and how that flipped the field and ultimately started their comeback in the second quarter of that game. Yeah, I feel like punting, there's no question you should yeah. keep that. The kickoffs, I guess mm-hmm. that would be the thing. And my question is then, is the only way to onside kick doing the fourth and 15 15. Mm -hmm. because you could make a rule and i saw it in the xfl it's pretty interesting where Mm -hmm. if you're kicking the ball Mm -hmm. you have to kick it past like the 20 or 30 yard line on the other side yeah so maybe you could have the best of both worlds there yeah for me man i'm a purist i love the kickoff play i think it's one of the most exciting plays in football even with their adjustment of the rules in terms of the alignment and how they are anticipating you kicking it out the end zone when the ball is in play though from a often from a kickoff or kickoff return standpoint it's electric on both sides mm-hmm. when you see some of these big returns that's it's emotional guys get up they get going or when you get a big time tackle inside the 10 like that's crucial like dudes love that the team feeds off of that no, and fans love it as well you saw it in the chiefs game yeah you, absolutely. you brought it up on the podcast hardman getting that return yes. that sparked the chiefs comeback absolutely man so i definitely think it's important what do you think then all right say we keep the kickoff but we mm-hmm. want to implement the fourth and 15 or the yeah. fourth and 20 play mm-hmm. do you get rid of the surprise onside kick or just the onside kick in general where you have to kick it past like the 20 yard line <laughs> well this is my only issue because this is a part of the rules that you could potentially bend if i'm telling you i'm kicking it onside it has to be fourth and 15 but if i want a surprise onside kick i technically still get to kick it from what the 30 instead yeah. of the 25 so if it isn't successful, I'm still gaining more yards than if I were to go for it on the 4th and 15th from the 25-yard line and miss it. You understand what I'm saying? I guess, but if just the general rule for the kickoff is you have is to it kick has it, to be certain. That's what I mean. Well, then, yeah, there, will, there won't be any more surprise on side. The next thing you could do is the sky kick. Yeah. Yeah, so you just kick it as high as you can to one of those up backs, <laughs> one of those. I mean, it's always a strategy involved with it. Trust me. I mean, that could be interesting. I mean, because I, I know the, we The sky we kick would be harder, though, if you have to kick it past the 20, right? No, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah, because like the what's the risk in that though? Why don't why don't more teams do that? Well, sometimes you do, but it depends on their second level of guy. So you know you have your return man, right? <clears throat> He'll have two up backs with him, and then it's typically a line. It used to be a line in between that. Now they separated where what ten or eight guys have to be within like ten yards, and then it's the big gap in between. But what you would do is this for the teams, and this is really when you have like the wedges. Remember, like now they they could do two man wedge, but other than that, you can't really have any type of wedges. So back then, this is anywhere between ten to two thousand ten to two thousand fifteen. If you had offensive linemen back there for your wedge, you sky kick to them because they're not used to handling the ball. They're not used to catching the ball. So even if they fair catch it, the probability <laughs> of them throwing the fair catch sign but muffing it was highly likely. So that's why you would do it. And even now with the Steelers, they'd always make anybody that was on the second line, whether it was Rosie Nix, I did it a couple of times, any of the old linemen that were going to be back there. Before and after practice, you have to catch five sky kicks. Like they're kicking it up to you, you have to catch it <laughs> just so you can get used to it. Because if you don't practice it, the first time it happens in the game, I'm telling you, your heart <laughs> is beating. I remember I was in Buffalo. We were playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. This was my third year in the league. Man, they got me on that back line. I'm like, oh my God. Like it's real. <laughs> So did that, you have to experience it at all? Luckily, they didn't kick it to you. Like, like, so literally the way it worked out was this. They, they oh, kicked it man. up. And for the rule for that up bad guy is this. You never take a step back. If you have to take a step back, that means the returner should get it. Okay. You don't do that. <laughs> so literally, I'm sitting here at Hills. I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm just like, yo, do I got to step back for this? I don't know. Luckily, my return man was like, yo, I got it. I got it. And as long as he has, as long as he says, I got it or me, 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 
then you know, okay, I'm good. I don't have to worry about it. You sound like the kid they put in right field in Little League. Bro, bro. I'm tell- <laughs> well, this is the thing. On kickoff return, who's usually back there? Receivers and running backs, right? Yeah. So the second line guys are to do what? To protect those guys. Right. Yeah, but if you put a receiver out there to block for another receiver, how's that going to look? That's not. Exactly. Yeah. So you already know your rule is, hey, I'm not here to catch it. I'm here to block for this dude. But the strategy to that is if you're going to put bigger guys back there, the way I combat that is make them have to fill the ball. And it, and that's the strategy of the game. That's what makes it so dope when you're talking about just any element of the game. It's always strategy involved in it, whereas the casual fan doesn't see it. They just look at it as, oh, it's just a kickoff. Cool. But no, it's a ton of elements that go to that. No, definitely. Yeah. Now, end of the day, would you want that implemented? I think worst case scenario, yeah. you could just add it and keep the kicking how it is, too. It's That just, is a potential. It's yeah. just you can have an option on what you how right. you want to try to recover the ball. Right. Well, because even, even now, if you did do the surprise on side, it's still... Not the 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 most successful play. I don't think it. Yeah, and I don't think it yeah. takes away from a team optioning to do right. the fourth and fifteen play. I, I do like that. I I, I would like. Dude, to see I would both. love it because it, when the AAF started doing that yeah, last year, yeah. I was like, man, it's dope. They need to do this. Yes, in the NFL. I did like that a lot, man. So yeah, I'm hoping yeah. I'm hoping it could be translated. I don't know if it's going to be that quick to where next year it could yeah. happen. But. Well, no. Typically, the way they do it is they'll try it in the in the Pro Bowl, then they'll try it that following year in the preseason. And if they like how it looks then, then that following year is when they make it like an official rule. That's what they did when they first started changing the extra point tries. Then when they moved the kickoff rules, like that's typically how it works. So whatever you see in the Pro Bowl, those you try it in that following preseason. And then from there, that following year is where it becomes like an official rule. I'm good with it. So we'll see how it plays I'm, out, man. I'm hoping it happens. You know, you should tune into the Pro Bowl so you can see what it looks like in person. I'm good. I'm, I'm just saying, man. I'm good, dude. You just never know, man. I'm good. You just they're, never know. They're not, I mean. They're going to do it. They didn't put that rule in. They, they have that rule, and they also have if a slot receiver uh, flinches now, it's not a false start as long as his front foot doesn't come up. So he can jump. He can lift his back foot up. But as long as he he resets one second before the snap, he's good to go. I'll let Twitter tell me how it is. Yo, I'm not man, watching here this you game. Here you go, man. I am not watching here this you game. Go. Here you go. You better tune in, man. I'm not watching this You better this tune game. in, man. <laughs> so we did have some other Steeler news, though. <laughs> Yes. So uh, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette writer Jerry Dulac, who covers the, uh, the Steelers, um, had a conversation with Mr. Rooney, and essentially the conversation was that they don't anticipate Bud getting an extension right now. They they were under the impression that it's going to more, more than likely be franchise tag with the potential of franchising him back-to-back years because the money that would go to his extension is already earmarked for the TJ Watt extension that'll be next year. So... My thought process was, I understand why you earmarked that money for TJ because of the two, TJ has been more productive. So you definitely put all your eggs in his basket because he's done it longer. This was Bud's first year going over double digit sacks, his most productive season. Yeah, I do. And I also agree that I don't think it'll be like a Le'Veon Bell situation where he played under the tag the first year, set out the second year. Because when it comes to the franchise tag value, the estimated value for Bud, his first year of getting franchised, will be $16 million. And that's just the estimation on how the salary cap will increase. The following year is going to be in the $20 million range, which is quarterback money. He's not sitting out for that. <laughs> but I guess my that's big- That's $36 million in two years. Absolutely. And that's not even counting the nine he just made this year. Who's going to argue with that? Right. <laughs> but now this is my, my, I guess, the only thing that I didn't like or that I'm anticipating not liking is this. By them making that statement, if you're Bud Dupree, your thought process is what? This is a business thing, right? So then I'm not showing up to any off-season workouts, right? You're going to see me the week before the season starts, which makes sense. That's the business way. And that's typically the people that have been franchise tagged. That's how they operate. But we all know when he takes that action, if he does take that course of action, the backlash that he's going to get. And for me, that's my issue right now. Why is it acceptable for an organization to use a tool like the franchise tag to ultimately one up and, and, and try to basically handcuff a player so he can't even test his market or see where anything is? But when a player tries to get any of that leverage back in terms of showing up to voluntary things or offseason things, he's going to be viewed as the bad guy. Why is that? I don't know. And I don't agree with it. Now, I wonder, you really think there's going to be backlash before the season? 
Absolutely, because this is what's going to happen, right? Imagine. I, th- I think if he's not playing up to par no, during the I season, think, I think there'd be backlash. I think that'd be well. Even, even if it's a slow start, I think that will be. But I think this is how it's going to work out. If Ben is healthy and Ben is out there, OTA's training camp, the conversation would be, oh, they're trying to win a Super Bowl. How do they win a Super Bowl? You got to have all your pieces in place, right? And you know right now, Bud Dupree is a key person to that defense. Okay? So the fact that Ben will be there, Bud's not there, the conversation is, well, this dude's Super Bowl champ. He's coming back from injury. Why aren't you out there? How are we going to be better? How are we going to be where we need to be once the season starts? That's why. Hmm. And we already saw that with L. Bell the first time around. I don't Even, know. Yeah, you so, think it, the it, first it, time? The reason why I can tell you because I was out there. I remember answering these questions. I remember going on social media. I remember it like it was back like you know, yesterday. Absolutely. Man. See, and, I, didn't and, care. And, I didn't care about it. And I used honest. to always be frustrated because I'm like, well, man, when, when it's, it's all business only when it favors management. When it's players, no one wants to side with that. And I always find it funny that only in sports is it like that. Because if I ask you who you sign with, your your coworker or management, everybody sides. Well, eighty five percent to ninety percent of the people are going to side with their coworkers or the employees over management. But when it comes to sports, it's always team organization over the employees, which are the players. It's because the fans are part of the team. <laughs> nuts, man. Listen, dude, I agree. I, no, I know. I agree with you because yeah. you brought up the whole Bell first year thing. I don't even mm. remember that. Yeah, man. I'll be honest with you. I didn't really care yeah. because I knew he was going to show up mm-hmm. week one and he was going to do good. He did yeah. have his he first, started out slow, his but first week or two. Right. Yeah, but I mean, it was still mm-hmm. Le'Veon Bell. So I didn't really care about yeah. that. And I remember year two. I remember year two, there mm-hmm. was way more discussion yeah. and people flipping out about it. Mm-hmm. Even though. And I think the difference between that and the bud was because there was rumors of a deal being out there, right? Even though we all know when it comes to that type of stuff, this is my only issue too. We know who's leaking these numbers. <laughs> it wasn't L. Bell leaking these numbers. No. That's management leaking these numbers. So you don't know really what that deal was or what that offer was. But if management says it, everybody else takes it as gospel. And for me, I'm just like, you hear that. And you just assume that, oh, man, this dude is selfish because he's not coming up. He needs to show up to these practices. He needs to show up to be here. And management can take one approach to it, and it's completely fine. Like, that's – I just – I don't understand. Like, help me understand that, please. Ah, uh, man, I don't know because I'm on your side. I'm yeah. definitely on your side with this. I, I want the players to do what's best for them. Yeah. And, I mean, I obviously want it win-win. I want right. the, the organization to win, and I want mm-hmm. the, the players to win. But I yeah. I side with the players in terms of you got to you gotta do what's right for you. Yeah. And whether me personally, because I'm sitting here on a mic, I'm, you know, living in the suburbs in Pittsburgh, right. just a 26-year-old kid, part of me is thinking, like, Bell, I don't know if you made the right choice just yeah. from the basis of you went to a crappy situation right, right. with the Jets as opposed to the Steelers, mm-hmm. but the end of the day i'm not in his shoes i don't know exactly everything that's going on behind the right. scenes so i'm on your side dude i don't know that yeah. i think just people think differently with this yeah. stuff if, yeah. in turn because you're asking me yeah because i feel like you, you can relate to that side more whereas like my side i feel like okay am i biased because i was a player like what is it what am i missing that only in sports the player receives the backlash for going against management Whereas in any other profession, you're like, man, get whatever you can get, man. If you want to hold out and go over here to that job, man, you do that. I really don't know. Dude. I don't get it, man. I really don't know. Um, I'm just trying to think even with me yeah. growing up where I think I was way more um, team based, right, right. you know, as a kid in high school and uh, growing up watching the Steelers. I I just don't even remember me having that type of mentality yeah. where it was that aggressive right, to right. where, oh man, you, what are you doing? But I, although I don't, there weren't these type of holdouts it wasn't, like no, that. No, it definitely wasn't. Yeah. So, I feel like back then getting franchised was like an honor. Like, oh man, he's the franchise player. Yeah. Like, and yeah. usually holdouts were, they were resolved rather quickly. Yeah. It wasn't like someone, the Bell was kind of the first one to do it. It really set out a whole season. You're right. Yes. And yeah. the media coverage and the critics, mm-hmm. it just wasn't like that 10 years ago. You're right. So this this was new territory. Yeah. And the social media element wasn't like that 10 years ago either. No. Whereas now they can really just say whatever to anybody. It's yeah. Just, yeah. So legit, I don't under, I don't really understand either, to be honest with you. I think, because okay. I think you can have that standpoint where you see everything. You right. just take a look back. Man, I want the Steelers to be smart with their decisions and mm-hmm. play, and have a winning team and right. plan for the future. But 
uh, these players got to look out for themselves and you got to do what's right by you. And you can look at that as an individual even and say, I would do the same thing probably. Yeah. Like it, I so like I don't know, dude. Okay, I, I really don't know. Okay, you got my standpoint. On I it. like it. Then. <laughs> See, that's why I like you. You, you, you cool. <laughs> I'm all right, man. I'm all right. <laughs> all right, now. But wait, actually, go before we go on, what do you think about that decision? What's I, it? The the potential double franchise? Yeah. For me, if you're from the business standpoint, from is that what you would do if you like? Were yeah, yeah, because you know T.J. White is gonna get the big time deal, right? T.J. Watt deserves the bigger deal of the two because he's done it longer. It just happens that Bud Dupree is up first. Now, I don't like going in with the mindset of we're not going to get a long-term deal done, though. I think you understand how much money you're anticipating spending on T.J., and from there, you formulate a, a nice extension for Bud based on what you're anticipating sending to him or potentially giving to Juju. I think that's how you operate in that regard, but you still try to get him a deal done. I don't like the mindset or the mentality of just understanding, like, hey, look, man, we probably going to franchise tag and just go from there. Because it's like you're not even having the open mind to this negotiation. Because mm -hmm. we're all assuming that Bud's going to want his market value, which he should, but every person is different. Every individual is different in terms of what they're looking for, what they're asking for. He could be wanting a three-year but a ton of guarantee money. He could be wanting a five-year with just a big number. Like, mm -hmm. you just don't really know until you come to the table. And I think just coming in with that mindset that we're just going to franchise him anyways, potentially franchise him again next year, I don't really like that approach. Okay. But yeah. just in terms of franchise tagging, yeah. probably smart. Yeah, it is from the from yeah. a bit from the like I said for management. Your, smart. your problem is the potential backlash from right. fans and media. Absolutely, because we know they're going to drag him for not showing up to certain. But things. in a way, it's also smart or a win for Bud Dupree, like oh, yeah. we said. Yeah, with the well, tag. in this situation, it definitely works in, in its position by position. In terms of a person who's not going to complain, the reason why I say Bud doesn't, outside of quarterback, pass rusher, pure pass rusher, which Bud is. That's the next highest tag. Then you got left tackle tag, and then you got lockdown corner tag. So in terms of you not him not worrying about being tagged more than once, think Kirk Cousins when he's with the Redskins. He did not care because it's like, bro, you can tag me again. That number is going to be even crazier. Yeah, and if I ball out this year, then then my number for my extension is going to be even crazier, which yep. we saw Kirk do. Yeah, over a span of three years, man, he he broke the bank. Yeah. So for Bud. That's got to be the mindset as well. Like, hey, look, man, if we can't get the deal done, you tag me. Okay, cool. If you try to tag me again the following year, lay. Hey, that, that check going up. But it's funny then going back to the whole fans and media complaining. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be complaining then. I agree. Because he's going to have to ball out. I agree. <laughs> but they do it all the time. And we see it. And we talk about it all the time. But yeah. Yeah. I think it, I think it, at this point it makes sense for both sides. And yeah. I like what you brought up, though, in terms of maybe being more open about right. it and just more behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. But on the face of it, yeah. I, I could see it for both sides right now. Yeah. And like I said, in this case, it works because of his position. The running back position last year was different because running backs don't get paid the same. So their tag isn't going to be the same. When we talked about if it was a, a defensive tackle or something like that, it's not the same element. And I think that's why this particular case is different and why I don't think he was going to, he's going to not show up mm -hmm. for when the season starts. Like OTA's training camp, good luck it's not happening <laughs> i don't see it <laughs> either personally. way he's gonna want to ball out he's not gonna just want right, to be right. like hey you're not giving me a long-term deal screw yeah. you guys right <laughs> like it's in his best personal it is interest in his, to yes. ball out absolutely <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so, yeah I like it. yeah we got that covered all right What's now next? this is another conversation right here man so mlb hall of fame was just uh, announced <laughs> last night i was surprised when you brought this topic up serious to me. i was <laughs> yes wow i was surprised by you being surprised by me all right because but, it's a direct correlation between the mlb hall of fame and the nfl hall of fame that i'm trying to understand okay 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 so last night Derek jeter and larry walker they both got inducted congratulations for them man huge honor to get in any hall of fame first off mm-hmm the yeah. interesting one was, once again, no Barry Bonds. Now, we all know, I mean, even if you don't follow baseball, Barry Bonds is one of those polarizing figures, right? Yep. One of the best to ever do it, regardless of if you talk uh, PED allegations pre or post. When he was, before he was on him, he was a top dude. Once he got on, he went to a whole another level. Now, when we talk baseball, though, they have what they call, like, the Greenies era, which was people taking amphetamines 
And these amphetamines are like, people say, oh, it's the equivalent of like drinking coffee. It's the equivalent of drinking coffee with like cocaine in it. It is like the Wait, when ultimate. was this? This is like way back. Yeah, this is way back. Yeah, okay. these guys have been in the Hall of Fame and stuff like that as well, right? But the reason why they say that they don't want to let Barry Bonds in is because of the PED stuff, right? right? So I guess my biggest quarrel is this. Why is it that you can have guys in the Hall of Fame that were receiving, you know, a, a performance enhancement back, you know, and, and this is still highly documented, but you're with a guy like Barry Bonds, he's not allowed in the Hall of Fame right now. Doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't. really doesn't. Because those dudes, Barry Bonds, Jason Giambi, mm-hmm. Mark McGuire, Sosa, A-Rod, man, you you were stopping, because I, I, I specifically remember as mm-hmm. a kid, I didn't watch too much baseball. I played baseball. I was somewhat of a fan. Yeah. I would be downstairs doing something, homework, Mm -hmm. whatever, and I'd have the Sunday night baseball game on. And a lot of times it would be the Giants Mm -hmm. whenever Bonds was playing. I would, I'd stop everything I was doing just to watch him hit. Absolutely. I would watch everything. And he was knocking into the water. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. And those dudes... They were just, they were game changers, yeah. man. Like, I know, whatever, the PEDs, but in terms of entertainment, yeah. those guys are Hall of Famers. Yeah, so it, and the thing is this, I looked at, like, if that's, quote, unquote, the PED era, I feel like because he was still that much better than everybody, he still deserves to be in there. That's how I look at it. Like, you look at his numbers before any of the PED stuff, he was still already on a Hall of Fame trajectory. And then the reason why he said he even started getting involved with the Balco stuff was because guys that were below his skill level or average at best that were on it started to catch up and was getting the notoriety. So then he got on and then he just went berserk <laughs> with his numbers. <laughs> so that, that's my biggest issue with that, man. But I feel like when we're talking from a morality standpoint, if the Hall of Fame was already just pure, no, no guys with any PEDs, any allegation or anything like that. If it was like that, that's one thing. But it's not. And then I think of when you talk about having a guy like Bud Selig in the MLB Hall of Fame who is on record talking about watching guys shoot up. Like, what are we seeing here? Like, I didn't that, know that. that. That drives me nuts. I just don't get it. I don't get it, man. There was something I just read, too, where McGuire would have his stuff out in the locker. Yes. When media and news reporters mm-hmm. would come in and they would see it like clear as day, right. where it wasn't, I don't know if it was the players who just thought, ah, this isn't really a big deal. Cause it's common cause everybody's doing it right or now. Or they yeah. just thought, man, even if it is a big deal, these yeah. media people aren't gonna, uh, well, I don't and, know, and this is my thing too. Like, this. I feel like in a sport like baseball on top of that, <laughs> you still have to have skill. People talk about, oh man. If, if I'm on PEDs, I can go hit, you know, 300 home runs. No, you couldn't. It's only one person in the history of baseball that has 400 home runs and 400 steals. That's young Barry Bonds. It's only one person that has 500 home runs, 500 steals. That's Barry Bonds. It's hard to do. You still have to have the hand-eye coordination. You still have to have your timing. Everything that goes with that, man. Like, I don't, Deke, I could put you on a PED right now. You think you can go out there and hit a home run? Mm. It's not happening, man. And that's my biggest thing. Like, it just, it irks me, man. Why though? Because I wanted to bring up another point. Yeah. If I'm Bonds mm-hmm. or Pete Rose, even. Yeah. I don't even think I won in the Hall of Fame at this point. Yeah. In fact, it looks crazy when you look at the guys who are in the Hall of Fame and you compare their numbers to Barry Bonds' numbers, who's not in the Hall of Fame right, right now. Because every year, think of Pete Rose. He's probably, yeah. you would say, top 20, top 30 of all time. All time. Hands absolutely. Down. Yes. Hands down. We aren't talking about those other 20 or 30 You're players. Not, no, we, they, we they are not. the spotlight right now. Yes. Yeah. We're talking about Pete Rose every year. He should yeah. be in the Hall of Fame. Dude, he has the most hits in MLB history. Yeah, dude. So at this point, I think it's more of an honor. To not be in. But, to mm, not be in. I because like people are talking about you and you yeah. are more relevant than ever. Now, in terms of all the PED guys, mm-hmm. Bonds is really the guy that sticks out yeah. amongst all of them. Well, what I think of guys like... Uh, you said Roger uh, Roger Clemens, right? Yeah. In the votes, though, I think it's Clemens and Kurt Schillings. They have they received seventy percent votes. You only need seventy five to get into the hall. Yeah. So they Bonds received, is close too. He was up to sixty. Yeah, he was right? in the sixties right now. Yeah. So I'm looking like, dude, these guys still got the allegations around them, mm-hmm. and, and, and they can receive that many votes over Bonds. Like I just don't understand how that is because. Under, I mean, I feel like it, it was never a question of who the better player was between those three guys. No, 
this bonds like what are we talking about here yeah probably i mean if you take away the steroid stuff probably best baseball player of all yeah. time seriously yeah. um but i mean if i'm him i'm telling you yeah. i i'm not even worrying about this mm. because you're getting brought up in this discussion every time and yeah. then they're pulling up your amazing numbers and it looks crazy <laughs> oh so, man dude i don't even know why yeah. you would want it i like now no can you answer that for me like would you if you're those two would the you want honor it? of being in though bro like i don't know when it, you get that gold <laughs> jacket that hall of fame status that's bigger than any news article. Like that is like you are in baseball immortality. You're in football immortality. Like it's it's different. But then, like you said, is the baseball hall of fame just the? Are we just considering it a joke though? It's still the hall of fame, regardless of how you want to downplay it or try to water it down. It's the hall of fame for a reason, man. Dude, who? So if Pete Rose and Bonds don't get yeah. in, who are people going to be talking about a hundred years? I know from they're now? still going to talk about those guys without a doubt. But when we're talking Hall of Fame status. There's a reason why the Hall of Fame is what it is. I feel like I'm just thinking, yeah. just think 100, 200 mm-hmm. years down the line. They can say, it, who's a Hall of Famer? Yeah, but there's but, a lot of people in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. There's there's going to be a select few like mm-hmm. Bonds and Rose yeah. that still be in the Hall you of Fame, know man. are Hall of Famers. I'm just speaking from like the athlete's perspective, bro. Like You play because you want to make it to that Hall of Fame level. Like that make that stamps you that solidifies you as the best of the best like ever but if Destiny. pete rose isn't in i know man what, what credibility are we giving the I hall know. of fame because what he did was gamble he gambled on the games that he was in point yeah. shaving stuff like that i mean that's kind of baller <laughs> <laughs> wait hold on wait he was point shaving i thought i thought pete he rose. was still no i thought he was still like playing like playing playing you you, you still play and you can still point shave you can do both you know that right you sure it was games he was in? I'm just saying, man. You check it. I don't know for a fact. So yeah, I shouldn't have brought I would it say, up. Yeah, you, you, I shouldn't have hey, brought it up. You point shaving, man. It's real. That's not cool. I that's all I'm saying, there. man. I'm not cool with yeah. that. <laughs> that's what you said. I'm cool. That's ball. I'm like, ah, I don't know about that one, bro. That was knee jerk. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I was surprised you brought that up because I always thought it was yeah. on other games. No, 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 no. They said he was point shaving. Right. Still had over 4,000 hits. Well, because like I said, you it's not like we're not saying that he was doing it every night, and I don't know all the details in terms of how often it was happening, but just think from the integrity of the game standpoint. Imagine if they, I'm imagine not, if an article came out that yeah, I'm sorry, I'm was actually, throwing <laughs> picks on purpose because they had to lose by one or you had to win by three. I'm that, you'd be sick. That was knee jerk. You'd be I, sick. I apologize for yeah. that right now. Um, okay, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. I wasn't. I just always thought I this was just yeah, like I no, said no, that, I always thought it was other games no, so I didn't no, know no, that no. that's why I was always like yo he's point shaving that's Pete Rose you tripping yeah but now my correlation to Man. my correlation to the MLB Hall of Fame and why guys like a Barry Bonds right a McGuire they they get this this and it's gonna be interesting too to see what happens with a Rod next year because now he's gonna be the new headline name potentially coming into this thing right we should see because he was also involved in the allegation and stuff like that so is he a guy that they vote in because you know he's with the yankees it's a right he's got the whole j-lo situation everything looks good around him now you know, Dude, just saying if bonds ain't getting it uh, i'm just it. saying i'm just saying it's gonna be interesting to see because remember bonds they, they from a media standpoint he wasn't friendly with the media he didn't like to talk no. to the media and I, think, I don't think he's ever admitted it either i know and i think that's some of the backlash similar to what we saw with to and how reporters that was one of the reasons why they didn't vote him, vote him in initially as a first ballot guy which is ridiculous yeah, absolutely because because, it has nothing to do with right we, we're not, it's not the hall of character <laughs> it's not the hall of integrity it's the hall of fame did you ball out or did you not ball out it's that simple i don't care if you're a good guy did you ball Tykov was a piece of shit, right? <laughs> I think by all Preach accounts. Preach to the choir. <laughs> Preach to the choir. But my correlation to the NFL Hall of Fame is this. When we say Bill Belichick, <laughs> first ballot Hall of Fame, right? It's hands down, right? Nobody even questions it, right? Yep. When we say Antonio Gates, what you say? Hall of Famer, right? It's no question, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gates was just suspended for PEDs, right? Recently. Yeah. Recently. Yeah. We already know Spygate. We already know that. That's proven with Belichick. But yet, it's not even a question of whether or not these guys are going to get into the Hall of Fame. Like, for me, why is it that in this regard, we overlook it in this sport? It's okay in this sport, but in this sport, it's not okay. But it'd be the same people that would make the case of why Barry Bonds shouldn't get in for this, but why Belichick is a first ballot on this one. Help me. help! Please help me, Deke. I've been searching for answers ever since this came out I yesterday, can, man. I can give some theories. I mean... No. 
baseball, America's pastime. The, it's so pure, exactly. but yet it's not pure. It's not pure. The Greenies era was real. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know what the Greenies era is, please, like I said, just type in <laughs> Greenies MLB and you will get everything you need to know about these performance enhancement. It's, you heard of like C4 and NO Explode, the different pre-workout <laughs> energy boost things that are banned in the NFL. That's the equivalent of the stuff they were taking. It's going to get you up. For the old timers in the NFL, they call it uptime. Up time, it, it, it made your heart, made you feel you could run through a wall, baby. Like I said, it's the equivalent of cocaine. That's what it's like. It's like cocaine. You take cocaine, you're invincible. Yeah. And it's cheating. <laughs> so that's the baseball side, even though you just disproved yeah. that right there. Um, and well, NFL, it's why, viewed why as... Why is it overlooked? <laughs> it's viewed as, we've talked about this before, the gladiators, right? Where you're doing whatever you can and it's mono e mono. I mean, Julian Edelman was suspended the first half of a year for PEDs and then turned around and won the Super Bowl MVP in the same season. No one cares about that. Right. But why? Why Why in baseball is, oh, no, we, hey, I mean, you can't do that. It's cheap. Because I think... But in, football's like, oh, man. I think man, in I football, you know, everyone deep down that's watching it is like, Bro. man, everyone's got to be on something. Like, you got to be it's on crazy, something man. to be playing football. It's crazy. But in baseball, it's just... There's there's not the physicality to it mm. where you should be able to do it no matter what. But I feel like because and, of the skill associated with baseball, I don't feel like the PEDs have the same type of regard. Whereas performance enhancements in football, you can kill a man. Yeah. If I was on juice... I could kill somebody out there. You already hit hard without the juice. Imagine if you're on the juice. Imagine if Debo was on juice. <laughs> Just think about that. Imagine if you, imagine if Ray Lewis was on some juice. Imagine if Troy Polamalu was on some juice. Imagine if Sean Taylor was on juice. Just think about that. They would kill, literally kill somebody. That's baseball, it's, it's the, like baseball, I can give you juice. You cannot do what they can do. You have to still be talented. You have to still be skilled. It's driving me nuts, man. Is it? Is it bothering it is. you? I don't like it. Wow. I don't like it at all. Wait, so you brought up Belichick. What do you think of Belichick then? Well, for me, I look at it like this, In terms this, of his man. legacy then. I look at it like this. Did he cheat? Yes. Is he still one of the greatest all time? I do believe he is, but I also think that you can't just say he's the best all time because of the cheating. Like, that's how I look at it. It's no different than the Astros winning the World Series. Are you going to say they're the best team ever when you know for a fact they were cheating? How can I say that? How? I can't. So it's like, yeah, is he an elite coach? Absolutely. But I still have to, in my mind, understand like, bro, you still cheated. And are we still viewing you the same if three of those Super Bowls you don't have? If if some of these Super Bowls are taken off of your resume now, how do we view them now? It is definitely interesting because you have the Rams and even mm -hmm. the Steelers. Yeah. They talk about like, yo, we Dude. we never ran this shit. And they know we're they doing it. it in the game. Like Absolutely. there was there was always some janky stuff mm -hmm. going on. And at this point, I don't want to come off as like salty and like it's being not a salty, hater. It's real because obviously I'm a Steeler fan. Yeah, but because I've always I've used that in arguments in the past, mm -hmm. like you know Tom Brady's legacy legacy yeah. should be discredited and Belichick like and I, said, and the Patriots. I, don't, I don't I don't discredit the whole legacy, but I'm just saying like for me to put them in the they are the absolute best, the goat. For me, understanding that y'all were a part of cheating is proven. We all know it. And it, stuff keeps coming up. Right. For me, <laughs> I'm just like, I cannot put you on that pedestal like that. Hmm. That's so, my biggest thing. Okay. Yeah. So you'd have like Chuck Noll, Bill Walsh. Like those type of guys. Yeah, yeah. They, they're up there. Absolutely. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Because I wanted to get your point on that because mm -hmm. I think there's there's one side with Belichick where people just have they overlook completely it, right? forgot about yeah, all that. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's the best ever. And like you're seeing him on NFL right. 100. Right. He's stuff the now. guy making the like. I'm like, what? You, he's a part. He was a part of the Centennial voting class. Yeah. Think about that. I'm he's, just like, yo, this is nuts. And shout out to Dick LeBeau because he's on the same. He was on the same voting board with him. I'm just like, Dicky, you were a part. You were a victim to this nonsense. Like what? the Saban documentary so like yeah. Belichick's getting wow what's going on behind the yeah. mad scientist like he's such a genius yeah. but dude we have definitely forgotten mm -hmm. those uh 2000 years and yes, like, like I said dude this shit keeps coming up yeah it, right that's the thing it's like <laughs> it's not as if it just oh it was a one-off like no no <laughs> it's constant you wait a little bit oh something else you wait a little oh it's something else like bro this is nuts but yet him, he still viewed it as oh the mad scientist, the best to ever do it. Just such a such a, a ahead of his time football mind. 
Deke, you could be ahead of your time too if I tell you the answer to the test. <laughs> you be the smartest kid in the class if I tell you the answer to the test before you even got to say, hey man, I got you, bro. Don't worry about it. It's it, it, what it is. And we saw that firsthand, <laughs> even with the Astros, like, bro, you just look at the just, oh my gosh. It just drives me nuts, man. It just drives me nuts. I'm just leaving it at that. Yeah. No, I, I I see it. I see it now. Now you're getting me wound up too a yeah. little bit now. Because like I said, I've kind of pushed it to the side. A lot of people have. And now I'm getting pissed off because I feel like <laughs> and I feel like every year around this time when the Barry Bond situation happens, it just refreshes my memory on, okay, so we're all playing this hardball stance in this regard. But yet there's so many other instances of players who have cheated, coaches who have cheated, and they are viewed and talked about in a totally different light. Yeah. 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 No, you didn't bring up good points. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm not against you at all. I, I yeah, I'm with you. Now, I guess my last thing in this whole regard, I think I find it funny. I actually yeah. I, it's kind of humorous. So, I was going to ask you my last thing in, in in this whole like situation right here, right? So, with the voting, it's typically writers, right? It's all the writers. What are your thoughts on it being writers only versus it having a mix of writers and former players? involved in the voting process whether it's the heisman trophy the the mlb hall of fame nfl hall of fame basketball hall of fame like how would you feel about that who does have players uh, players with it uh, any i have of them? to check i want to say the heisman the heisman trophy anybody who's won the heisman yeah. they have a say so in it so nfl hall of fame baseball hall of fame whoever's yeah. in mm-hmm. should have a say okay yeah. like, like how in, do you feel about that i'm in the hall of fame like i played against this guy i would say hall of fame yeah right? like that Vers- makes sense versus it's- just the guys who just covered the game watched the game like i mean because i've had the chance to interact with some of the guys at pittsburgh or whatever who have some of the voting and our just mind in terms of football and how things work are drastically different i'm just like i feel like it, it's crazy to me that yeah. you have a vote on this when I know for a fact you don't understand how this element works or how tough this is. I mean, everybody brings up the Larry Fitzgerald for the Heisman and how he wasn't voted on by two of the Pittsburgh voters here. Exactly. Yeah. I remember that. It was crazy. It's crazy to me. And that was probably one of the closest Heisman votes in the history of the Heisman Trophy. Yeah. I remember that. He got yeah. robbed. Jason yeah. White. Absolutely. Man. But I think it's just common sense, actually. Yeah. Really, if you think about it. You have players that went up against them, yeah, and they could just say for a fact. And I've said this to you before Mm -hmm. as a joke sometimes, but just eye test. Yeah, like if I say to you a certain player, Mm -hmm. and you say, "Yeah, Hall of Famer," like I played against him. Absolutely, I know for a fact he's a dog. Why would you not consider that into Hall of Fame voting? Don't take away the writers' votes; just add it in there. That's all. Absolutely. So if what the writers are saying are correct, then that should be validated by the by players. The players. Yeah. If it's not and there's start you're starting to get some mixed votes in there, then maybe that that's a good thing to start questioning. Yeah. I I think it's common sense. I don't have a problem with that at all. Okay. I'm assuming you don't either. I don't if it got switched to that, I wouldn't. What? I said if it got switched to that, I would not have a problem okay. with that. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. All right. <laughs> so we we didn't we didn't dug through all that. Now we did the last part of this thing, man. Got some new football blood starting up, baby. <clears throat> XFL <laughs> season starts officially February 8th, yeah. right after the Super Bowl. Eight teams, 10 week schedule, games on ABC, Fox, ESPN, FS1, and FS2. How are you feeling, man? Are you excited for more football? <laughs> are you ready? Are you fired up? I'm not as excited as you. Come on, man. It's football. It's like the AAF, but better. I agree with you on that, but do you think I was up for the AAF? (laughs) You weren't initially. We started having some conversations. Then I felt like you started get coming around. I to never it. watched the game though. It was cool. You I started you, you started following it though. You you would a little, know a little bit. bit. I think it was more because I was finding clips from the AAF. Hey man, it doesn't matter. It doesn't edits. matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you you were you were you were aware. You were conscious. You were woke. I was aware of it. Yeah, but I'm not. Ex- I'm not that excited, dude. Yeah. Because I looked at the players and uh-huh. there's no Manzo and there's no Kaepernick and that's who. Ah, oh, cut it out. That's who the ne- league needs. No, it isn't. <laughs> I'll look at them like, man, they got. For me, I always love it because I'm still young enough in terms of me just retiring that I still know a ton of those players that are playing in that league. I knew that's what you're gonna. So say. for me, that's always why I'm like I'm interested in it because I know these guys and some of these guys were good enough to play in the NFL. Some of them did have 
five, six, seven years in the NFL. But now it's like, okay, for some reason it didn't work out the rest of those years. They want to see where they're still at. This is a good shot for them. So for me, I like that element of it. I do think just the time of year that they're playing these games is going to help out too. I do. Why and because that? it's on major networks. Why because because it's real. Because you're just going off we the love Super football. Bowl high. Yeah, I'd say you're going to the Super Bowl high, but people, I mean, you're going off the Super Bowl high, but people love football. We know that. And we always try to figure out the next thing to NFL caliber football. And how do you get that is by having some of these NFL caliber players, because it's a good amount of those guys who have NFL experience. I think that's why. And just the overall intrigue of, okay, can this league hold up? Can this league be a good league? You talk. People are going to watch XFL games a lot more than they're going to watch the Pro Bowl. We can all agree upon that. I would. Yeah. yeah. I would be more inclined to throw in an XFL yeah. game than the Pro Bowl. So so I think that is one of the biggest reasons why. And I think, too, because of how it's structured, if it does work out this year and say next year you start getting some of those college kids who, decide, who say, hey, I don't want to play another year yep. here for no money and take mm-hmm. the same risk. I'd rather go play a shorter season, make a couple hundred thousand, and then after that, hop into the draft. I think that portion is the most intriguing to me about it. So that's why I'm really hoping that the league works because I'm not a big NCAA guy in terms of the, the business side of it. No, definitely. And, I mean, with how close it is to the draft, though, mm-hmm. that's a question you're going to have to ask with the college players. And well, no, no, no. But think about this. I'm not saying for the college kids who are going to the draft. I'm saying for the kids, like, think Trevor Lawrence. He's the the big example, right? Yeah. Where he won the championship, last, won that championship last year, had to come back to play again this year. Like, for him, imagine if he says, oh, you know what, I don't – and like I said, this is just a, 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 a example. Mm-hmm. It's like, yo, what if he says, I don't want to take that same risk playing at Clemson this year for no money. Granted, I'm going to still have the hype around me, but I don't want to take that risk for not getting any type of compensation where I can go to an XFL, play less games. Granted, they're not BCS championship games, but I'm still going to get paid six figures and from there I can hop into the draft. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Think mm-hmm. about when it is. If you're yeah. uh, if you're already in January, or actually it'll be February, yeah. you're only two months away from the draft. Why uh-huh. try to injure yourself or but, take that risk? This is what you're not understanding. You can't go into the draft after your second year of college football. No, I know, but that's what I'm saying. Why not just sit out the whole year? Because nobody's going to sit out a whole year like that. For the people who have, you saw Maurice, Maurice Claret do it. It typically doesn't work Unless out. Unless you're like, just not going to go to college. This That's what I'm saying. That's the interesting right. thing. That's what I'm saying. You withdraw from the college element of it, and now you're playing just an XFL season. You're, you're equivalent of your second year. Because remember, in football, you have to be out of high school for three years removed. Yeah. So in this regard, so you would skip your third year of XFL correct. though, right before the draft. Right, right. Because yeah, you don't you sign on a one year deal to do it. Like you do your two years of college. Now I'm gonna do this one year XFL. XFL season's over. Now I'm free to go. That's what I'm saying. Because you would have had. Oh, to you're stay. Say, you're saying Trevor Lawrence plays right now. Right. That. That's what I'm saying. Like, I thought you meant to, next year. No, 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 no. I'm saying like right now, instead of having to worry about that following season, mm. that's what's because you were going to have to play it anyways. That's but what I'm you're saying. You're still sitting out basically a year then, though. What well, depends on what time you're looking at. Like I said, the time frame of it dictates a lot. But for a guy like Trevor Lawrence, right? If it doesn't work for the next year, right? I understand that argument. But last year, he still had to play this right. season plus another season. That's still two years of the risk. Two years of no money. Two years of taking all of these opportunities to profit on yourself, endorsements, whatever it may be, and not having those. Mm -hmm. And you think about a guy like Tua Tua Talava. Talava, (laughs) How do you say his name? I just call him Tua. That's why everybody says Tua. But you think about him, right? And how how'd that work out for him? Yeah. It worked out pretty bad for him this year, right? It did. And he didn't get any other compensation for taking that same risk. There are guys that have bet against them in the past. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, hedge the game. I forget how right. they do it. Mm-hmm. But it's some like an insurance policy. Yeah. You can do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a question. It's kind of all mixed in together with yeah. the whole should uh, college players be paid mm-hmm. and the XFL because you've brought this up before yeah. where college is still pure. Mm-hmm. Is is there not something to be said for that in terms of in your terms own of, enjoyment when, when of playing I say, football? When I say college is pure, I speak solely on the sense of like you typically don't have to deal with as many of the politics of the professional ranks, the contract negotiations, things like that. In if terms, it was a flat amount of money, then you don't think there'd be thing, that problem. You can't do a flat amount of money because if, if 
when I was at JMU and I was the defense player of the year for the nation, if I was getting paid the exact same as the walk-on guy or the guy that plays two snaps in the game, I'm feeling some type of way. It's, no re- it's the same thing in the NFL why you can't pay Ben Roethlisberger the same amount of money you would pay, uh, no offense to him, but like Robert Spillane. Like, you just can't <laughs> do that. Like, yeah, oh, flat right, right across, right? No, you think he's showing up for that? Heck no. So, same in college. And, and the issue is this. It, you can't say that, oh, well, they're getting a the scholarship for four years, things like that, when a coach is making $10 million. Like, nah. No, I agree. I definitely agree. Do you, whereas, he could go, whereas a guy could go to the XFL, say, you know what? I'm not worried about these college years. I'm still going to get the good tape. In fact, I'm playing against better competition than I would be playing in college. Think about that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to have better footage out there, let long, a shorter season, so less injury risk. Oh, and I'm going to be making good money. On top of that, it's no different than the kids that say, I'm not going to college. I'm going to go play basketball overseas. They get used to the, just the professional lifestyle, right? And even if you can make the argument of, well, man, it's nothing like March man. It's nothing like going to college and then these experiences, the education, all this other stuff. But they go overseas, play for a year, then hop in the NBA draft. You can always go back to school. We already know the window for sports is shorter than that. So for me, I look at it the same way as, okay, the guys have to go overseas for basketball to just bypass that rule to avoid the NCAA. They can still make money. They can still get endorsements, all these other things. XFL can be that same avenue for football. No, definitely. But I'm just going from more of a personal standpoint. Mm-hmm. where Because I'm, you value NCAA. You like watching college No, no, football, no. Right? I, I'm actually all for the yeah. players getting paid. I'm just mm-hmm. wondering, like, just say yourself. Yeah. Or even, because the, the reason I asked this, mm-hmm. I heard LeVar Arrington on one of those Fox shows say, yeah. Man, if I had my choice after my junior year, I went mm-hmm. pro. Actually, looking back, I would have mm-hmm. went back to college for my senior year. Mm-hmm. And he says that because it didn't work out the way he wanted to work out. But I can assure you, if he didn't get paid, like the money was what made him go pro. Let's not, let's, I mean, it's easy to sit here. And, oh, yeah, I wouldn't do it. I would have stayed for another year. No, you wouldn't have. When they but he, were but he you, I mean, he did have a successful NFL career. I know that. But I'm just simply saying it's easy to just sit here and be like, oh, yeah, I would have went back. No, you wouldn't have. No, you wouldn't have. The same reason why we're looking at Travis Etienne for Clemson saying he's going to come back for another season. He's like, bro, you got a chance to make millions. And you'd rather forfeit that to try to go play football again to up your draft stock? Like, you're crazy right now. Yeah, I guess the only reason I ask is because yeah. some players will mm-hmm. say I had the most fun playing football no, in no, no. college. Well, and that's what I mean. College football is fun. Like, to be around your guys in that setting. Because college just in general, the setting of you being away from home, like, dorm life these these are your brothers that's why you you are more close with your college teammates than you are your professional teammates but what i'm saying is from a high insight being 2020 from a what makes the most sense from a financial setup long term for the risk reward long term i'm siding with the side of let me make my money over let me have this fun because at the end of the day that money is going to last me a lot longer than this fun did that's what i'm saying I'm with you. No, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely with you. I guess that was yeah. just something I wanted to, I, I guess I was curious about yeah, yeah. because that, that does play into it. If if the, the money is starting to come into play, that mm-hmm. takes away from yeah. the fun a little bit. Maybe. Only, Maybe. See, I think it's different because a lot of these, I know the people that I could relate to when I went to college, a lot of us, we had a ton of fun, but we were broke as heck. And if there was any time or opportunity where we could have made money like this, we ought to have been like, bro, you better go. Otherwise, I will smack you if I see you here tomorrow. Like, <laughs> we're, we're not talking, oh, you get five Gs. We're talking, you know, six figures. Like, that's different. That's what I'm saying. So for me, when I remember the college guys I was around, a lot of us come from the same backgrounds. Very humble. Very humble beginners. So when you got opportunity to still advance your playing career, which is the goal for a lot of guys, right? To make it professional. For the guys that don't want to go pro, okay, cool. You stay at the college level. For the guys that don't have the financial issues, you stay at the college level. For the guys that just genuinely, just genuinely want to play college ball, you let them do that. But for the guys that are really trying to pursue the NFL, the guys that are really trying to maximize their profit, the guys, because it doesn't apply to everyone. Let's be real. It doesn't apply to if it's 90 guys or if it's 90 guys on a college roster, it doesn't apply to 75 percent of those guys but for the guys that it does apply to i think that that's the avenue that is available for them and i think it gives them that intrigue no i i think i think we're saying the same thing then that's why the xfo is cool it is basically like the international basketball it just gives you another option so if you do want to i'm not saying that every player has went overseas to play basketball to skip out on college 
And that's not the case. Because like, there is probably something to be said for, man, I'm, I'm playing at LSU or right, Al- right. Alabama mm-hmm. with those crowds, that yeah. brand, that tradition. Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, there could be a player where, man, bump that. I don't care about that. Like, no. I'm going to go get this paper. Yeah. And then I'm going to see you in the NFL in a couple of years. Oh, and if we both get hurt and don't make it, well, guess what? I made me 200000 playing two years in the XFL. Would you make it at LSU? Oh, you like that tiger? I, I keep wearing that tiger gear. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you enjoy that tradition. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it's start, then I think that's the most interesting thing for me. Like, if that's why I'm intrigued about if it. If you're asking me this season right now, I looked at the top names. Yeah. Man, like there actually is some Steeler old Steeler players yeah, like Eli Roger, mm-hmm. Coates, uh, Demarcus Ayers, Landry uh, Jones. Steven Johnson is in. Uh, yeah, he's in there as well. So there's obviously those players. Actually, but, guest of the show, Stephen Johnson. He showed up on the AM I, show. Shout I remember out. that man. Yeah. About a year ago. Absolutely. Got a ton of my jam. You guys up there. Yep. So for this year, I mean, there's that, but I don't know if that really draws me in. Mm -hmm. Like I kind of mentioned earlier when you first brought up the topic. But Mm -hmm. if you're saying five, ten years down the road, my thing is just for this year. Yeah. You brought it up. Could this league actually just be a success? Right. Branding, consistency Mm -hmm. to where maybe next year, the following year, there is a couple like high name college players that are like, man, I don't want to do the whole college route. Yeah. And then now the next thing is though. Mm Are they success in the NFL? Do they right. feel like the XFL prepared them good enough right. for the NFL? And then that could start becoming a legitimate route instead Absolutely. of college. And, so and we already and we already talked about the infrastructure of it in terms of having Oliver Luck, who is, I mean, he was one of the big guys in terms of how the NFL, NCAA got so successful. He's the main guy with that. Mm-hmm. So when you think about it, I'm just like, man, it makes perfect sense. The XFL is a brand, even though it failed. Yeah, it's still a brand. There is some allure yeah. to XFL. And you're still playing on big time TV networks. You think about the guys that might be in the SEC but play for Arkansas. They're not on TV like that. They're on their own ESPN360.com. You, you, you know what I mean? We don't want to watch that. <laughs> These got a chance to play on real life TV. Mm-hmm. Like it's different. It's different. Yeah. And and you know, just hypothetical. Andrew Luck retired. He comes back next year into the XFL with Oliver Luck, his dad. Oh, That's all man. I'm saying. Come on, dude. You would be sick. You'd be tuning in there. Come on, dude. You would. You, no. I'm just throwing it out there. 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 Come on, I'm just throwing dude. it out there. Hey, son, I need you to help my league out. I got you, Pops. Well, they should be signing men's own Kaepernick. That'd help him out. From a rating standpoint, but not from a talent standpoint. Dude, you cannot be telling me Manziel is not better than some of these QBs. When's the last time you saw Manziel throw a pass? I mean, come on. I don't care about that. Heisman winner. It's a actually, lot of Heisman with Actually, Okay, didn't. well, you know what? Troy Smith, he, he was a Heisman winner. Let him go in there, too. It's more interesting than some of these guys they Stop got in it, right man. now. Stop it. Dude, Manziel actually didn't play that that bad in the NFL. He was bad, but... <laughs> <laughs> hey, what about in the CFL? How it was wasn't that? awful. Oh, man. Yeah, hey, it was awful there. <laughs> Keep going. I'd rather see him though than some of these QBs. Just because of the give name, him one more it. shot. I'm saying he did have one more shot. Remember after he left the CFL, he went to that like weird, like I don't even know that football league where they had like the all black jersey. It was weird. He sucked there too. Just give him one more shot. I'm saying for this year only. For this year. Why? Just for the name. Yeah, exactly. That'll no, that'll I have me see watch. That. He was trash. I'll watch. I'm cool on that. <laughs> I'm cool. Let I, me see some guys who've actually like been quality. When I read for Kaepernick, he wanted more money than what yes. they were paying. As he should, though. Yeah, no, 100%. Because he, he would be a big draw. Yes. He would As be. he should. That's like, I mean, hell, AB, you want to play right now and go play in the XFL. Dude, no, he's worth way more than that. You know what his talent demands. And, and that's the thing. I mean, Man. can they pay those guys what they want? A couple million or something? I don't. I mean, I don't know their financial situation like that. I'm sure Vincent Man got a big checkbook. He might make it happen. I mean, I don't know like how their thing is set up, like from a salary cap standpoint and all those other things. Yeah, and then I don't know how much they want to jump into the controversy. Like right, year because one, that's right different. off the yeah. bat. <laughs> like for us, we joke about, oh, you'll get the ratings, people will tune in. But if you're trying to build something, right? Long-term. And, and and we know what McMahon. His biggest thing was he didn't want anybody that's been like any type of like off-field incidents, arrests, charges. He doesn't want any of those players in that league, which is the biggest reason why he didn't have Menzel in it. That was why. Because yeah. that was like the big headline thing of like no players that have been arrested, no players with off... Like, I forgot all the rules and regulations. I want to say it was just... It was either charged or they couldn't have been arrested. But that was a big part of why Menzel wasn't allowed to play in it right now. Yeah. Because so- they want to have more morality in it and things like that. And they said that you have to stand for the national anthem. That was like another... Thing that they doing there. 
Yeah. So if you had me running the league, yeah, it, it might only make it a year or two. Yeah, but, it's but it'd be it'd be some strong ratings right off yeah. the bat. Well, hey, the, the first time <laughs> XFL was like that too. Exactly. Yeah, it did not last though. Right. So I mean, and we've talked about it this whole conversation. If they're looking for 10, 20, 30 years down the line yeah. to become a legitimate threat to college football and mm-hmm. be a new pipeline for the NFL, then maybe it is a, a good idea to yeah. <laughs> stay away from controversy. Absolutely, man. So yeah, dude. That was fun though, man. It was. It was good talk. It definitely it was, was good man. Good talk, man. Wide range of uh topics. Because we're very dynamic and versatile in what we speak about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially now that's the off season too for us, man. This is we get a chance to really fun. just like <laughs> spread our wings. It's not the regimented, oh, post game. Oh, now we're previewing this game. Like, we get to really just talk. We definitely do. Yeah. I like that too, but hey, yeah. there's uh spice it up a little bit. There's different seasons for a reason, right? Absolutely, How about that? man. That's Absolutely, <laughs> I like it, man. But yeah, is that it then? Yeah, man. So shoot, you know how we do, man. As always, we appreciate everybody that's tuned in, and appreciate everybody that's been tuning into the other platforms as well, whether it's YouTube or just iTunes, listen to the podcast, everything like that. We definitely appreciate y'all. So yeah, man. Yeah, I might as well plug this too. Oh, yeah, you plug talk it, about different platforms and different yeah. things we're doing. Check out these film sessions coming up. Oh, absolutely, just, man. Just watch out. It's absolutely. a little nostalgia. Yes, indeed, <laughs> man. Going season by season, top five plays. Y'all getting the y'all getting the preview right now before we even make the official drop. So feel lucky, feel privileged. Exactly. It's gonna and, be a little countdown. Yes, indeed, man. Argue, debate, whatever with what selections we pick. Yes, but, indeed. Uh, we we, we, we want to hear it though. And Anybody that's purchased the book too, most of your life, man, I definitely appreciate y'all for that. The hardbacks have officially arrived, and we appreciate the support, man. Y'all doing the awesome thing, man, because a large amount of the proceeds are benefiting the Marine Heritage Foundation. So, man, definitely appreciate your support. So, continue that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, now that we're done appreciating y'all for appreciating y'all on top of appreciating everything that y'all appreciated us for appreciating y'all doing, yeah. We appreciate you for tuning in. <laughs> and until next time. Peace. <laughs>